Hi, thanks for watching my views and news. Uh, some new stories for you. First one from Ethiopia. First two new stories from Ethiopia. Then a new story from uh, Somaliland. And lastly, Sudan from Ethiopia. We have a new story from the Amhara region where an officer of Ethiopian intelligence agency has been captured by Fano fighters. Who is the officer, male or female? Secondly, Romia, region of Ethiopia, where Romo Liberation Army fighters have been carrying out attacks on commercial vehicles, cargo vehicles, especially around Addis Ababa. Now, a new announcement by Ola about the start of new. Such attacks, a new attempt to lay siege, new attempt uh, to make uh, roads uh, not usable for uh, commercial transport, for military uh, this week. This week, Ola is going to announce, uh, Ola is going to start new operations. We'll have a look at that. Early Somali lands. Uh, president arrived in Ethiopia yesterday. What is the agenda of his visit? And lastly, Hamati is in Djibouti. RSF chief is in Djibouti. He has visited three countries in the past uh, four to five days. By the way, he stayed the longest in Ethiopia. Firstly, we are. Uh, Amhara region of Ethiopia, where we have received exclusive information for you. This information has not been shared by Fano fighters, Fano groups officially so far. But uh, I think uh, in coming hours, you could see this information published by Pro Fano sources. Uh, exclusive information we have received through some people who are in touch with the developments in the Amhara region. Pano fighters have a very effective intelligence collection system. I uh, mentioned that in several videos. If we compare intelligence network of Fano fighters and Ethiopian military, I think Fano groups have a better more effective and more impressive uh, intelligence network. And uh, it's very understandable. It makes sense because they are uh, in people. They have the support of people. People support them. People want to support them openly. Some who, who cannot support Fano openly, they support Fano through provision of information to Fano. So provision of information for Fano uh, is easy. And that is how Fano groups are able to carry out attacks on military convoys. Most of these attacks are carried out on the convoy when they are on the move. Attacks on prosperity party meetings, attacks on prosperity party officials uh, when they are traveling. It means Fano fighters in advance uh, receive information about these uh, movements, and that is how they are able to plan their attacks. ENDF does not have this type of very effective, uh, grounded, uh, grassroots level intelligence network. But ENDF spies are operating. By ENDF, I mean Ethiopian Intelligence Agency. Ethiopian Intelligence Agency officers are operating in the Amhara region. The agency is led by Thomas Gunterone, who is, I think, from the Amhara region. And he is the one who is leading this uh, state of emergency uh, setup established in the Amhara region after the government around uh, five months ago imposed state of emergency to counter Fano fighters' advance. What we have learned is that a senior officer of Ethiopian intelligence agency has been captured by Fano fighters. I have received details, but uh, I will only share those details with you which I committed. That I will share only this part of the uh, development with my viewers. The officer has been captured with four different ID cards. 
she is using four different id cards what is her real name i don't want to speak on that but gradually uh, you'll see other sources report about this development uh, she is a top officer reportedly working for ethiopian intelligence agency that just shows how effective fano groups are in terms of collecting information about ethiopian security forces that where they are where are they operating which officers are operating which intelligence elements are operating in the amhara region we'll share more details with you in coming hours so far uh it has been confirmed to me that the officer is in the custody of one of fighters one fighters don't want to harm her a lady but uh maybe she will be shown uh after a few hours secondly was oromo liberation army ola has made a new announcement oromo liberation army started a campaign of blockage of roads ola carried out several attacks on vehicles uh moving from or to addis ababa the east west and south of addis ababa uh, roads uh, remained blocked though for a few hours but ola showed its capability to lay economic siege to addis ababa now a new announcement by the oromo liberation army that uh, this that the new campaign of attacks along roads will start on the 3rd of december today the 1st of december so movement to and from addis ababa will not be disrupted today tomorrow as well but uh, on the 3rd of december we could see a renewed uh, campaign by ola to block the main roads ola two days ago warned truckers and others they should not uh, move to and from addis ababa meanwhile the ban will remain put in place according to ola in border areas no movement of vehicles from gambala to oromia from benishangal gomos to oromia so any vehicles uh, which uh, would try to enter oromia from these two regional states will be seen as legitimate targets why because of you remember in a video a few days ago i told you about arrival of ethiopian military assets in gambala region and purpose was to use those assets in the operation against the oromo liberation army so ola does not want uh, reinforcements enter uh, oromia from bg reinforcements for ethiopian national defense force from bg and gambala and sometimes civilian vehicles are used by military that is why Ola will continue its attacks on Gambala Oromia, BG Oromia border, but no attacks uh, around Addis Ababa today and tomorrow. Reportedly, the third of December we could see renewed attacks around the capital city, not in capital. Ola has not been able to gain a foothold, which is significant in Addis Ababa or in Shagar as well. The attacks have been mainly uh, at a distance of forty, fifty, sixty kilometers away from Addis Ababa. Thirdly, your Somali land self-proclaimed the country's president visited Ethiopia. He, he visiting Ethiopia, he arrived in Addis Ababa yesterday, welcomed by the Mac Emmanuel, Deputy Prime Minister. Musi Bayabdi is the president of so-called uh, Republic of Somali Land. What is the agenda of this visit? Firstly, this visit is part of already existing Ethiopia UAE alliance. Now UAE wants to bring Somali land in the loop as well. Somali land is a natural ally for Ethiopia if Ethiopia wants to have strategic ties with the UAE, because UAE has built uh, a port in Somali land, Berbera port. 
USDP world has more than 50% shares in Barbara Port. Ethiopia, when Barbara Port construction started, committed uh, and it uh, had, I think, 19% shares if I'm shares if I'm not wrong. But later, it could not honor its commitment or financial contribution, and Ethiopia had to withdraw. And now Ethiopia is badly in need of access to the Red Sea. It wants access to the sea. Maybe UAE is uh, mediating between Somaliland and Ethiopia because UAE is now a key ally of Ethiopian government. Uh, several things happening in the region indicate that Ethiopia and UAE are on the same page. UAE wants Ethiopia to pull out of Djibouti because Djibouti kicked out UAE. UAE built a port there, but uh, then UAE had to leave uh, Djibouti. And some disputes, some cases are pending between the UAE and Djibouti's government at some international courts. So UAE wants Ethiopia to pull out of Djibouti. Why? Because if Ethiopia pull out, pulls out, if Ethiopia stops using Djibouti's ports, it could be uh, a blow to Djibouti's economy. UAE obviously interested in Ethiopia using Barbara. This visit is very crucial. Can Pim Abi's government sign a strategic deal with Somaliland about using the Barbara port? Because Somaliland is not recognized. Though we know that uh, talks uh, resumed between Somaliland and Somalia a few days ago, and the two leaders, um, Osi Bayabdi and Hassan Sheikh, met in Djibouti. They signed a new agreement. In one month, a committee is going to be formed to prepare a roadmap for their cooperation. But no signs of uh, complete integration of Somaliland and Somalia. So, can Ethiopia sign a strategic long term deal with Somaliland? That remains to be seen. Meanwhile, Ethiopian ambassador to Djibouti shared a tweet about. Uh, Musi Bey up this visit to Ethiopia and he used the word Republic. The President of Republic of Somaliland has arrived in Ethiopia. After criticism from uh, people, from users, uh, the ambassador deleted his tweet. So, Somalia is at Eritrean camp. Somalia is very close to Eritrea. Somalia in talks with Somaliland, maybe about unification. Uh, Somaliland closer to Ethiopia than to Eritrea. Somaliland closer to UAE as well. And the agenda of the visit mainly is Berber, I think. Secondly, uh, of course, the two could. Uh, Discuss the two countries could discuss the uh, chaos which is being seen around Red Sea in Red Sea, where Houthis are hitting commercial ships affiliated with Israeli government. And thirdly, two months ago, Somali land appointed an ambassador to Ethiopia. Ethiopia has not accepted the credentials of the ambassador so far. Several issues. Let's see. We'll try to update you in coming week. Last few words, Hamdan Dagalo, popularly known as Hamati, Rapid Support Forces Chief, visiting third country in the past one week. Hamdan Dagalo came out of isolation a few days ago since the start of war in Sudan. This is the first time that Hamdan Dagalo has been seen visiting neighboring countries. Burhan started uh, a regional tour a few weeks ago. Now, Hamati is following as well. Hamati visited Uganda first. His second destination was Ethiopia. And uh, today, he was in Djibouti, met with Ismail Umar, Djibouti's president. Djibouti is uh, IGAD uh, chair. And Djibouti is mediating between Hamdan Dagalo and uh, Al Burhan, and after two days, there could be a meeting, direct meeting between Hamdan Dagalo and Al Burhan. And Djibouti uh, says that next week is very crucial. This week is very crucial, and some critical meetings are going to be held this week about the conflict in Sudan.
by the way as i said earlier hamda and dagaro has visited three countries so far in the past one week but in uganda i think he stayed uh, for almost a day djibouti's visit is going to be brief as well he stayed the longest in ethiopia and maybe there could have been some contact between Hamdan Dagalo and UAE diplomats too in Ethiopia. Uh, maybe that is why he stayed the longest in Ethiopia. Ethiopia is a key ally for the UAE and indirectly for uh, the Hamdan Dagalo's rapid support forces as well. Let's see what Ethiopia does. Will it take sides uh, or will it... Uh, uh, be neutral th that remains to be seen. But Ethiopia has shown its uh, intentions that it is a force to reckon with when it comes to conflict in Sudan. Yes, in other parts of the region, maybe Ethiopia is isolated. To the extent of Sudan, Ethiopia is relevant because it's an ally of the UAE. That is what Ethiopia is saying. And Ethiopia is giving this message to neighboring countries, Eritrea, Egypt, they are on the other side, they are supporting uh, Al Burhan. Ethiopia seems to be closer to RSF than to military, Sudanese military. Thank you for watching.